Praise the Lord and a warm welcome to this session. I'm sure all of you out there are really stressed out under the restrictions that COVID-19 has brought about in our lives. Now all you have to think of is every struggle that comes in our life will bring an incredible change ahead. In the Old Testament, we see the Israelites happen to go through lots of struggles and sufferings, but eventually they become the most blessed people of the world. In the New Testament, we witness the passion of Christ sufferings of Jesus on the cross. But the great shift that happens through the resurrection of Jesus is that many lives have been transformed and they receive the anointment of the Holy Spirit. And amidst these thoughts, I would like to talk about the one whom God the Father has sent into this world to save us from all these trials and tribulations and give us eternal life. Yes, Jesus is the one and only Savior of the world. I know as young people, you might think, is it a kind of intolerance from the part of Catholics to say, Jesus is the one and only Savior. Friends, Acts chapter 4 verse 12. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The whole stream of revelation in the Bible from the beginning points to Jesus and his finished work. The law which was given to Moses pointed to the grace and truth which were to come by Jesus Christ. We know the prophets prophesied the coming of Jesus and his sufferings. The angels of heaven filled the air with the melody at his birth and announced that the great deliverer has arrived. During the baptism of Jesus, the Spirit of God descends like a dove and rests on his head. And the voice from the heaven said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. John, who baptized Jesus, said, Behold the Lamb of God. Simon at the temple, Luke chapter 2 verse 29 says, Lord, now let your servant depart in peace according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the gentiles and for the glory to your people israel dear friends the apostles themselves claims in saint paul's letter to the first corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 saint paul says for no other foundation can any one lay than that which is led, which is Jesus Christ. These teachings and revelations from the Bible does not ask you to blindly believe that Jesus is the one and only Savior. The Catholic Church encourages you to reason, to think, and then to believe and grow in faith. Science tells us there is a cause for everything. Science finds the cause and deals the sickness. If there is a cause for everything, then nothing happens by chance. If there is a creation, there is a creator. Today, we are in a quest to know this creator, savior and the Lord of our life. Christ is our creator and the redeemer. The very name Jesus means Savior. St. Luke chapter 1 verse 30 And behold you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus. The very name Jesus is given from heaven. 
which has great power. The power of Jesus' name is simply amazing to experience and I have one such experience which I would like to share with you. While I was a teenager, I had no faith in Jesus. I was very playful, naughty and disobedient girl. My parents were very good believers. They went for everyday mass. They prayed hours and hours. I never used to listen to any of the corrections they gave me. In those days, I had a habit of climbing the stairs two steps ahead jumping. And I got down the stairs the same way jumping two steps down. My mother used to always correct me, but I never used to give my ear to her. But one day what happened was that while I was getting down, jumping two steps down, I slipped a stair and I fell crushing my little toe. The pain was indescribable and to my surprise I called out the name of Jesus. And somehow I got up from there and I hopped down the stairs and I got into the room where my mom was sitting. She saw my toe, it was being crushed, jammed inside and miraculously she just pulled it out and I was having a great relief. I was out of pain. And the most beautiful part is, years after, I had been to a retreat where my mother forced me to this retreat and I was sitting there and a person called me for a counseling session and I went and in the counseling, they told me the same incident that happened years back. And this incident, he described saying that, on that day you called the name of Jesus and he came down to you and he left you without any injuries. Yes, dear friends, when you call out the name of Jesus, he is the only savior who can come and save you. In order to save us, Jesus became human like us. Yet he was without our weaknesses and without sin. His great love caused him to live heaven and dwell among us. He wanted to take away our sins, for which he gave up his own life as a punishment for our sins. My dear friend, salvation is not forced unto you. It is a gift received by one's free consent and voluntary cooperation. No blood can cleanse our sins and the guilt that is within us, but the blood that was shed by Jesus on Mount Calvary. No power can open the gates of hell, but that of Jesus. The power of Jesus binds Satan and puts him down under our feet. Let me also remind you about a common thought that misguides many people these days, that there are many ways to reach the goal of heaven and eternal life. Many consider Jesus to be one option of many. Jesus did not come to be a path, he came to be the path. Jesus did not come to show us how we can obtain heaven by ourselves, but he came to show us his glory and to be our savior. Let me tell you something that surprised me on a Google search. It is an election organized by the Pauline Order on the All Saints Day in Italy. The election was conducted in order to find which is the saint to whom most people address their prayer of assistance. The results were such that the first place was for the stigmatic saint, Saint Padre Pio, with 31%, and followed by Saint Anthony. And the most surprising fact is that only 2% address their prayer for assistance to Jesus. My dear friends, many a times we forget Jesus is our God, Savior, the second person of the Trinity. Jesus redeemed us from our bondages and gave us eternal life. Saints offer our prayers to Jesus our God. Saints accept Jesus as Savior and follow Him in turn for the gift of heaven and eternal life. To follow Jesus isn't like so many other goals which you abandon after a brief period of time. St. Francis Savior 
a great missionary who came to India inspired many people to accept Jesus as their savior through his witnessing life. He was the youngest child of a noble, wealthy, pious parents. He completed his studies. He took up teaching in universities and later joined for theological studies. And that's when he meets St. Ignatius Loyola, one of the renowned saints of the Catholic Church. He was a fellow student who inspired him and influenced him with the word of God. That is St. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his life? Or what shall a man give in return for his life? St. Ignatius further told him, the world is the master and it does not keep its promises. And if it keeps, your heart would never be satisfied. But suppose if it satisfies, how long would this happiness last? And in case, would it last longer than your life? And when you die, what did you take to eternity? These words resounded within his heart and he was gradually enlightened to follow the savior of the world and accomplish a greater goal in his life. St. Augustine is another saint, a great philosopher, theologian of the medieval period. He spent many years of his life in wicked living and in false belief. His sense of impurity and pride had darkened his mind so much that he was not able to understand the divine truth. But it was through his mother's prayers in Monica and through the marvelous teaching of St. Ambrose, he was convinced about the Christian faith. But he did not become Christian because he felt that he will not be able to live a pure life. But one day, when he heard two people had converted on reading the life of St. Anthony, he was ashamed about himself and he cried out to his friend and asked him, what are we doing when unlearned people are taking heaven by force and we with all our knowledge are so cowardly that we keep rolling around in the mud of our sins. With bitter sorrow, St. Augustine cried out to God, asking God how long he needs to wait. Why don't the hour put an end to his sins? Just then he heard a child singing, take up and read. He knew this was an inspiration from God. He took the Bible and he got the verse, St. Paul's letter to Romans, chapter 13, verse 11 onwards. Beside this, you know what hour it is, how it is full time now for you to wake from sleep. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. Let us then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves becomingly as in the day, not in driveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provisions for sin to gratify its desires. My dear friends, this word inspired St. Augustine and he was transformed, converted, and began a new life in Christ. St. Augustine was a sinner, but his sincere repentance and commitment to follow Jesus in holiness made God to rise in as the most great scholar of all times. And my dear friends, to follow Jesus isn't like any other goal which you can abandon after a period of time. But to follow Jesus is a commitment where you unite your heart with Jesus and you proclaim Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Trials and tribulations in your life are inevitable. But when you proclaim Jesus as your one and only Savior, He will take control of your life and strengthen you to face your anxieties and accomplish the impossibilities of your life for the greater glory of God. Let's recite the creed and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting.